And we're here with one of DSR's riders at being the points leader, Antron Brown. And Antron, first off, uh, thanks for taking the time to get up early on Sunday and uh, meet with us. Let's talk about Pro Stock Motorcycle. We've only had one repeat winner in all the races that we've run so far this year. You're hanging on to a thin points lead at this stretch. What is going on in Pro Stock Motorcycle? I mean, uh, the class is very competitive this year. I mean, with the V-Twins and the Suzukis, uh, we're doing everything we can to hang in there with our Suzuki, but uh, our U.S. Army team's been pretty strong. Our team's real strong, and uh, being here with DSR, having the best of everything, uh, that's what's keeping us where we're at right now. I know the Suzuki teams feel that they are at a performance disadvantage, but the V-Twins have only won five of the nine events so far. You've won the other four, the Suzukis. And the points battle's the closest ever. What do you guys feel that their advantage really is? I think their advantage is that they can get away with more stuff than we can by having a horsepower, a little bit more horsepower and torque. And uh, I mean, it definitely plays hand. I mean, when we look at our class, you have all the newcomers on Buells who are, you got rookies that are qualifying the top five to field. And you got our normal top 10 people like Mike Barry, Sean Gann, Steve Johnson, Gino Scaly, that the bottom half of the ladder and they're veterans. And uh, those guys know how to win races. So. Uh, I like to see them get back up in a hunt again and make it even more competitive. What your teammate Angel Sampay is seventh in the points right now, and the two bikes not really as consistent combined together. You seem to have a little bit better performance advantage. Do you guys know what's going on with her machine right now? Have you been able to pinpoint it? Yeah, we've been having a lot of electrical problems and glitches, and uh, Angel's been doing a great job riding, but uh, we've been back at the shop working hard on her bike. I've been working on her bike more than I've been working on mine, but. Uh, I think it's going to come around this next race or so, and uh, she's going to be right back where she used to be at, and up in the top four, top five motorcycles. Let's talk about the back half of the season, because you guys run 15 total races compared to the 23 that the other three professional categories run. What do you guys have to do to win this championship, and how does it unfold in your mind over the next few events? I think basically what we got to do is just concentrate round by round, and that's what we've been doing. And, uh, I've been going out there each round, between each round's the final round, which it is. Once you get past, once you're in first round, that's like our old final rounds, and just taking it hard and serious to hard, and just cutting the tree as as hard as I can. And same thing with Angel, she's doing the same thing, and we're just racing each round like it's a final round. And at the end of the race season, we'll see where all our chips fall and see where we end up at. I know the one thing, and we've got about 20 seconds. Your reaction time? You've been drilling the tree this year. Well, I I'm not, haven't been worrying about red lighting, so uh, I have to do it. I mean, when you got a V-twin that's outrun you by three or four hundred, so you got to get an advantage somewhere else, and hopefully I can just keep on being consistent and fast on that tree because uh, it's been winning this round so far. Well, thanks for taking the time to be with us, and uh, thanks for everything that you guys provide for us uh, on the racetrack because Pro Stock Motorcycle this year has been a blast. Oh, thanks, Marty. Enjoy uh, it. All right, we've got to take a commercial break. When we come back, you don't want to miss this because we take you on a tour of this 70,000-square-foot facility, and Schumacher's newest driver, Melanie, stops by to talk about her new job and the new team. Plus, we talk to two men who make the Team Schumacher Funny Cars go fast. NHRA Today from Indianapolis continues in just a moment. And as we come back inside, you see Tony Schumacher's Top Fuel Dragster. Of course, Tony won Top Fuel last year at Brainerd International Raceway. He'll be defending next weekend. All the teams based at Don Schumacher Racing come home to Indianapolis earlier this week. It's the first time they've been back since the Western Swing began a few weeks ago. And as you're about to see, there's nothing that will help a road-weary team like coming home to a facility like this. Just two miles from Indianapolis Raceway Park, you'll find the new digs for Don Schumacher Racing. Utilizing 70,000 square feet of space, every element of the team, except Bob Glidden and the Pro Stock operation, is under one roof. We have 11 18-wheelers. We base all the show car operations here, the dyno operations, the engine building operations, the fab shop, plus the administrative offices, and even a couple of sleeping rooms so that when we have overnight guests, they have a place to stay. One of the best features involves the design process for the race transporters. Both shops have a place where you back the rigs in and then you offload the equipment and work on the cars in another part of the building. In this building, all of the rigs back in and no different than at the track, they work on the race cars right next to the trailer. So we don't need extra tools and it saves a lot of footsteps. It's really an efficient way to run the business. And we went back and forth. We did 27 different architectural drawings before we settled on this one. It works. 
There is another goal in all this self-containment. The other thing that we're doing, and this is Don's nature, is to bring things in-house. You'll see our machine shop, our fabrication shop, our clutch preparation rooms are pretty well advanced, and we're doing as much in-house work as we can. And it's not that we don't trust other people. Uh, it's a matter of just being able to develop things in a better manner. And uh, if you can find something that gives you a performance edge, that's good. You can save a dollar along the way, that's better. And just in case you want to start your own operation, like Don Schumacher Racing, better get your checkbook out. And I think the building itself is about $6 million empty. And then everything that Don's accumulated, we just laughed about this over the weekend. Seven years and a month ago, there was nothing. And today, it's probably worth between 20 and $25 million. And joining me now is uh, Ed the Ace McCullough, of course, crew chief for Ron Caps and the Brute Flopper, and Mike Neff with Gary Selzy's uh, Oakley Mopar Dodge Stratus. And guys, uh, do you ever get lost in this building? I mean, this is huge. <laughs> it's a great place to be. Let's mm -hmm. talk about your team right now. You're number two in the points, Mike. Uh, you're number four. This has been a very, very competitive year in Funny Car. <clears throat> yeah, it really has. <clears throat> There's been a lot of close races. There's a lot of good running cars, and you just can't. You got to be on your game every week. It seems like you're. You can get taken out at any time by anybody. Folks, he's not asleep. This is the way he always is. This is the way he is when he wins a race. This is the way you are. Why are you so even keeled? I mean, I, I've watched him get ballistic, and and you're just even strain all the way. I don't know. I think it's works better for me if you just don't get. Two up on the ups and two down on the downs. Just kind of try to keep it in the middle. Seems to work the best for me. That's no fun, though, is it? Well, let me tell you something about him. He'll get a little keyed up. It's just that you don't see it. <laughs> oh, okay, now we're getting some of the inside scoop back in the, in the transporters. What's the difference right now? Why are we seeing four cars, your cars in fourth in the points right now? I mean, this is a wide-open funny car race going down the stretch. Well, Marty, it's like Zip said. I mean, any car, you qualify at one of these races now, uh, you're capable of winning the race. And I, I feel that our, our team, the Schumacher team here, with our funny cars in its entirety, uh, we've come together, gelled, and I think that just the willingness to work together and everything is a big benefit to us. And uh, Zippy and Selzy, they're doing a great job out there, you know, and, you know, Olsen and, and uh, Baysmore over there with the other car. I, I think that it's just, it's coming together and it's working really well for us. Mike, uh, you, you guys have been running some big numbers and then when you've had your problem, it, it's like one run and all of a sudden something goes wrong. Has that changed your strategy going down the stretch, or are you guys going to be as aggressive as you have been the first half of the season? Yeah, we're going to have to be. Um, we've just, you know, these things are real temperamental, and, you know, you can, we've made four good qualifying runs and come out first round and smoke the tires within the first 10 feet. But, no, I mean, I, I like the aggressive approach because the minute you back off, somebody, somebody will step up and pick you off. I'd rather go down smoking the tires than to have somebody outrun us. Well, guys, I know one thing. It's been exciting for us. I mean, it hasn't been the old standard, hey, John Force has got a big lead. Who can catch up? This is really going to be a dogfight. Thanks for taking the time to share some moments with us and take us around the shop as well. One of the drivers who lives right here in town is one of Don's most recent hires, Melanie Troxell. And thanks for taking the time to spend with us this morning. Let's talk a little bit about the progress your team has made, obviously, getting this late start, the big opportunity. We, we all know that anybody who's followed, uh, how happy you are with that, but how happy are you now with the progress that the team has made? You know, I, I can't say that, uh, that we wouldn't have liked to have won a round or two by now, but I think given the situation, when you look uh, at what we've done in a matter of, of basically one month to get a whole new team together, the people get it out on the track, and we have qualified for each of the, the first three races we've entered, you know, that we're pretty happy, and we're making that steady progress that we need to make, which is kind of a lot of the idea about bringing the car out this year is that, you know, time for us to go out and, and test the car out, and, and hopefully in, uh, at the same time provide some information to Tony. Well, not only provide some information, but uh, Tony's only 16 points back in the championship hunt right now. That's one round of racing. And you've already met up with Doug Coletta once this season. Down the road, that's really your role, isn't it? Take those guys out in those early rounds and help Tony. 
But, you know, it should be a two-way street, and theoretically next year, uh, when we start out from the beginning of the year and we're in the hunt, too, that'll work out for both of us. Uh, right now, we'd like to go out and win some races and, and hopefully help Tony out in the meantime. As far as looking down the road, I mean, Don has been very good after the debacle a couple of years ago uh, involving uh, Whit Baysmore and, and Gary Selzy about no team orders, and we haven't seen it so far this year. Everybody's run straight up. Is that really got you excited about next year as well? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, Don's been very clear from the beginning about... Uh, the way he was going to run or adding the second dragster the way it would be run that uh, that we're going to run heads up that we're not a block of car or just an R&D car for the U.S. Army team but uh, you know obviously we want to go out and, and take the Skull Gear car and, and uh, be competitive at every event and uh, you know we're, we're excited to be a, a part of this team in general just because of the resources and the manpower they have. Uh, did you ever think you'd be involved in a race team that had this many transporters, this big a facility I mean, this sport, yeah. it's amazing, isn't it? It, it is really. Uh, it, it's amazing what, what Don Schumacher's been able to do here. I mean, it's an incredible facility. Again, the manpower, the people, um, you know, that's, that's an incredible opportunity for all these teams to have, to have this, this kind of an operation and, a, um, you know, a, a team uh, uh, that's run this way. Got time to answer a friend pit report for us? Absolutely. All right, we've got Kathy Grossman from Western Pennsylvania. She's got a question about tires, Melanie. She says, stock car drivers change tires half a dozen times in one race. How often do NHRA top fuel teams change tires? Well, that's a great question. Uh, you know, we don't get really good mileage with, uh, with these tires on the top fuel cars, and it depends on a lot of different factors. But we can get uh, anywhere from just one run on the tires to, to maybe four, and it just depends on how aggressive you are with the tune-up, how much the tires are spinning, how much abuse the tires take. So it's, uh, you know, maybe a mile at the most. <laughs> a mile on a set of tires. Thanks, Kathy, for your question. If you've got a question for us, all you got to do is email us at nhra at espn.com. And Melanie, thanks for taking the time, and uh, we'll see you in a matter of days at uh, Brainerd. All right, thanks. All right, we're looking forward to it.